around, the meta's moved away from those control mages just a little bit for crying. So be curious to see how RNG adapt as we are going to waste absolutely no more of your time, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else in between. RNG versus FBX game one. And we're already starting to see some pretty, pretty specific bands coming out here. The Akali, the Senate of Thresh, the Zinzao, and the Ezreal all banned away. So RNG trying to follow a similar formula to what they did in, in playoffs, right? Where it's a lot about focusing down that bottom lane. Take away the Senna because that has been FPX's bot lane's uh, go-to combo this time around. You know, the Senna Tom Kench supporting and facilitating the, the top side of the map. LWX has actually performed pretty well. You're getting Crisp extremely strong early on since he's the one that's farming. Taking away the Thresh as well. So what RNG's draft is saying is we don't want LWX to have any safety. We want to be able to choke him out. We want to be able to target him down. And with all the champions left open, RNG are going to move to that Renekton in, which for RNG does make a lot of sense because it is one of the, the flex picks that Shahu and Kryn actually share. Well, RNG doubling down the old saying, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And I think it's fair to say LWX has definitely had better days and then in the last few weeks and months. But with the Renekton picked up, it does mean that they are leaving open for the Lee Sin and Rumble combination. Hell, they can go for the set Rumble, which we know we talked about time and time again is such a potent combination. Can still go for it with the Lee Sin locked in here. And now for RNG, they're going to look to see in a way what does he want to pick up. And I do think that the Diana, just as he locks it in, is the perfect combination here with the Renekton. Yeah, it's been something he's really liked going towards uh, in in terms of solo queue. He's actually putting a ton of games on this champion, but haven't really seen it too much from him here in the LPL. And it's something that I think is pretty good up against the Rumble. Very easily able to get on him in the mid game. Just burst him out before he's able to do anything. A champion that's, I'd say, very much reliant on his, his ultimate and being able to play around your heat well. And then we're also going to see the Gwent. So already signaling that we're most likely getting crying on that Renekton pick. And on the opposite end, I love that we're already getting full top sides coming out from both teams. Set Lee Sin with Rumble on one side, Gwen Renekton with Diana on the other. So we're going to have a ton of brawls, which we know this has been much more of a top side oriented meta. We know FPX have been one of the teams that have kind of strayed away from that despite the champions they've been locking in. But with this matchup, you expect them to be putting a lot more emphasis on that top side. Now, with all the top side picked and gone away, you've got four bands from either side to just continue to put pressure onto this bot lane. And for Gala and LWX, they have definitely shown that they have got things that they 100% prefer when coming into the bot side. And it's going to be about who's able to get that advantage. But we actually see the Re Nocturne locked away here. So the set they're thinking for on side of FPX could be a flex down to Chris, but I like the respect that RNG are giving over here. Yeah, that one is pretty interesting. I'm also just curious where FPX will go on four. We know we still have kind of the, the standard of supports left open, right? Leona and Nautilus are the typical goal twos for pretty much every team. So FPX can potentially get a favorable trade of one of those on that side. The Varus also still left open. So FPX very easily able to go towards that. Both of these guys are Premier Kaisa players, even though I feel like we've seen, oh wait, actually there's Ban Kaisa, so that doesn't matter anyway. I think Kaisa's kind of fallen off anyway, so that's good that it's out. And then, yeah, I feel like the, the Thresh ban actually really limits a lot of what you can go towards, right? We pretty much only have Varus that stands Ooh. out as a top tier AD carry, and then Tristana being the other one. Well, the last ban is going to be the Jack. So RNG saying we don't care what LWX is able to pick as he does end up picking himself up the virus. They want to try and limit this top side as they do very much feel that Ooh. this uh, set is going into the bot side. But the Callista locked in here for RNG. I would not be surprised to see the Nautilus or Leona locked for Ming as well. Yeah, and this is going to be all about dive, dive, dive for the side of RNG. I mean, both compositions really signaling that, but... For RNG, it's going to be a lot more about getting on the back line to where FPX, at least you do have that long range damage to play with coming out from both the Varus and the Rumble. So if RNG puts himself in an awkward uh, position, right? Chains of Corruption into an Equalizer or vice versa can really do a lot of work. And now we're looking at where FPX go. The Leona, as we highlighted, is still open if that's what Chris would want to opt into. Has only played one game of it this split so far. The only other thing we've seen him really go towards is uh, that Alistar, but... Braum would be a very nice counter to what RNG picked it up, but instead wanting to bring out the Tom Kench. This is actually Chris's most played support, but we haven't seen him pick it up other than when uh, LWX has brought out the Senna. 
Yeah, this has been the, you know, something that Chris obviously loves to play, knows how to play very, very well, and gives a lot of safety to the Varus in that box side. So the Kalista looking to get very aggressive, of course, with the Nautilus, will be able to kind of, you know, put down the pressure, but Tam Kench mitigates a hell of a lot of that, and we'll be curious now to see how this all pans out here for the side of FBX, and they actually do end up putting that set up to the top side, so... After all the top lane bans that came in, they decided out of going towards the uh, the set, the support role, and teams locked and loaded. It looks like, in my opinion, RNG, they're going to be looking to try and get those early objectives going with that Callista, get those early skirmishes going with the Renekton and Diana combination. Yeah, that's the, the best part, right, is that you had both teams coming in talking about top lane, but RNG just says, we don't care about that. We are going to get this Callista. We're going to come in. We're going to play around bot side and punish you there. We even saw that from the bands coming out from RNG is that they were hoping to limit the things that LWX and Crisp are proficient on. I think for the side of FPX, it's going to come together a lot better once we do get to those skirmishes. You do have a lot of AoE damage, especially in chokes. This is such a potent composition. Set equalizer, uh, set showstopper coming out, equalizer from the rumble, just all the arrows coming from Varus on the back line. And then we're going to be looking towards RNG to be able to get past that, get straight onto the Varus, and then you just have a ton of bursts coming out. Diana ultimate, Gwen, Gwen's ultimate, Renekton just getting in there with a full combo, uh, Kalista throwing in the in Ming in the Nautilus. So yeah, I think we're going to have a very bloody game, a very brawly game, and you wouldn't expect anything less when it comes to these two teams. Honestly, it's exactly what I wanted to see as we came into this series. It's exactly what the fans wanted to see as well as we are going to be jumping into game one of this best of three, the replay of the Spring Split Finals. RNG versus FBX. RNG looking to try and get themselves back on top and into the ascendancy of the LPL ladder and FBX looking for a little bit of revenge after their finals defeat. And a denial at the side of an NSI appearance and looking at all of it, it's almost ident- Oh, so close. If only there was an engage support instead of a Tam Kench. We almost had identical um, main ruins here for both sides. Yep, almost the same keystones. We do not have the same for the support role though. So, you know, that was obviously expected. We know for the side of FPX, they want their bot lane to provide more safety and utility. That's the role that LWX and Crisp have really played this split. So kind of interesting that FPX were able to have an introspective look into their failures at playoffs and realize, hey, we haven't been successful when it's been about putting these guys on like crazy uh, volatile champions. We're going to get them on something that can play a lot more of a role playing role. And I think they've done phenomenally well on it. Coming out in the mid lane, though, I think is going to be the most interesting matchup because on one side, you have RNG who have the Renekton into the Lee Sin, so I think he should have the, the early pressure coming in. But I think Dwinby has obviously had a much better year than Kryon. I think it's very easy to say that from performance-wise so far, Kryon's still coming into his own, still extending his champion pool, figuring out the best ways to work with Wei, especially to where you hit on it earlier. When it comes to mid-jungle synergy, I mean, Tien and Dwinby have just been punishing people this split. Oh, they've been pummeling him into the ground. It's just kind of a, a reminder of, like, this is still one of the most veteran and tried and tested jungle duo or jungle mid duo combinations that we have in the league. These guys have been playing with each other for such a long time. They're almost telepathic in how they want to be able to communicate. They don't even need to say words, but... For the side of, you know, FBX, it has been a fantastic start for them. Yes, they obviously picked up that one loss, very unfortunate there, but we talked about it, you know, throughout the split so far, is that they have looked like they just picked up where they left off. They haven't really let the loss of the finals get to them too hard, and they're looking to get another shot at it. Yeah, definitely not. I think they, they look reinvigorated. Doing Beast talked himself about how he feels like the meta has helped out with their performance. I want to see what comes into this game when we do have Nuggery on the set. So not a champion you're going to expect to see a ton of pressure coming out from early on with especially Rumble, who, you know, is most likely going to come out with that full clear as well. But both sides, just once we hit the level six marks, right, there's going to be crazy skirmishes. I think first Herald is going to be insane coming out from both sides way especially though the, the first few levels not too much action that can come out Xiaohu even signaling that he is going to play more four team fights by bringing out that ghost rather than the likes of an ignite finally onto the rift as you see both the junglers starting off on their blue side so a mirrored start for tian and wei 
And in this early game, I will be very much looking at this bot side and seeing if they're able to make anything happen. Way will be pathing down towards it. So if any early shenanigans will be happening, in my opinion, it will be down towards this bot lane as you combo it up with the Callista and Nautilus. That's where I'd love to see if RNG can make something happen, but still, when you're up against Tom Kench and, you know, the teams are going to get as much use out of Tom Kench before he changes uh, as, as they can, I think Chris will do quite a good job of being able to shut a lot of that down. On the opposite side, though, seeing Nugri do a good job of... He's actually just trying to focus on getting the wave and not, not really looking to trade too much with Xiaohu. And expected starts, right? We see the push coming out from their neck early on up against the, the Lee Sin. We see Varus, Tom Kench, very potent bot lane early on. Tom Kench does bring a lot of laning power, I think, more than meets the eye. And FPX just kind of saying a little hello, getting some vision down, and I don't think they should be able to force anything out of Brian. Nope, he has a slice and dice to take that a level two. And they're able to just waste a little bit of TN's time. They had a good little ward just at the top of the Raptor camp to be able to spot him out. And you see already, we again, we talk about it so damn much, but the TN Doonby combination, they're already starting to see if they can get it going on very, very early on into this matchup as FBX's bot lane do ward up the Tri Brush of Doom, making sure that if Diana is going to come in, it'll have to either be to River or Lane. It's Ming just rolling himself up. Actually, has a sweeper, so anticipating this. And this makes it sound like very dull things are happening, but these small little moments as Nugri has to flash away, but where is he going to go? No way! Blood! Xiaohu is the top lane king! And Eve's talking about how he wanted to learn some lessons from Nuggery, but this time he's the one teaching those lessons. But we gotta pause because we got more action. We got more action. Chris has to flash away. It's a double flash in as you go in on top of it. It's way picking up that kill. They jump back in on top of Doonby. And RNG have just come alive in this early game. They have FBX's numbers so far. Let's remember, RNG have the bloodiest, bloodiest games in the LPL so far. They've been all about the action. One champion kill per minute is absolutely insane. FPX going to try and equalize. They're going to get onto Cry. And let's see if Doombi can W over the wall. They might be able to find this. Ooh, flash from Doombi trying to land the resonating strike. But Cry responds to it. And he's going to have a slice and dice for another two seconds. He's waiting for it. Is he going to have enough time for it? No, he will not. And Cry gets caught out on the out of the rotation. And sadly, all the other members of RNG had already started channeling their backs, made their way off the rift. So FPX at least able to find something out of that. But I want to go back to that top lane solo kill because that was not something I was expecting to see coming into today. We see Nugri is the one that has the push. Let's go with the face breaker early on. We see the stacks of Q coming out. Oh, just lands a ton of damage. Ooh. He might land the Haymaker, but it's just not enough. Gwen just bringing so much damage. We need to remember as well, uh, healing off a lot of that from his passive when he is getting damage down onto Nuggery. So I, I don't think Gwen's a champion that we're surprised about whenever things like this do happen. Still the most picked top lane champion here in the LPL. Does have a hell of a lot in her kit to be able to make those opportunities happen for them as uh, we see Tien just being forced away from his Krogs, uh, as he was spotted out there, so not quite sure exactly where the Diana or the Gwen had gone in that in little instance, but still, we wanted brawls, we expected brawls, but both of these teams really just coming out trumps and trying to make some advantage, and even though, as you said, FBX, they lose out on top and in bot, they're able to get one back in mid, that goes a kill over to Doombi, he's now about 15 or so CS ahead, as well as that kill, so picking up the Iron Spike whip, and... This is the guy, like we talk about it so damn much, but Doonby is the, the main man on this roster. Nugri is still the best top laner in the LPL by a lot of people's margins, but whenever we want to see FBX, whenever FBX are doing well, it's off the back of this man in the mid lane. Yeah, and you know, I think this changes the matchup pretty drastically to where Kryon should have been the one who would have pressure until the Iron Spike Whip came out from Lee Sin. Then Doonby would be able to start doing that thing where you have a few points in E, you have Iron Spike Whip. You can kind of just ignore him and clear the wave, but now able to get that so early on, he's the one who's able to keep up pressure. He's the one who's able to outright Kryon, especially now that he does hit his level 6 mark. And oh my god, I'm wondering what we're going to see now. Oh, the stun does not come oh, out. And yes. Xiaohu rinse and repeat. And Doonby almost goes down as well. There's no junglers around to pick up the kills here as he ends in this bot side. He does not have Equalizer to try and make this dive work. Very difficult when you don't have the hard CC. And RNG are just, they're surviving in mid and thriving in top. 
I just need to highlight this again that what we had on our screen. Nuggery was leading in solo kills. He came into the series with 11. Shao, who didn't even have one yet, coming in first seven minutes of this game, already picking up two against the man just absolutely dominating. And I think Shao, who has been one of the members who has looked most comfortable on the champions we've seen, he's already played the Gwen. He has been picking up things like the Lee Sin. He's even pulled out the Viego. So nice to see him be able to default back to this and have such a, a good performance. Nuggery still able to keep up in CS, I feel like is, is pretty good. So not being denied on that front is about six, 700 gold behind in that one-on-one -on -one matchup. But now we're getting to a point where Rift Herald's going to spawn. You have pressure up in that top side. You would expect that would be something that RNG should be able to secure quite easily. Shaohu was thinking maybe it will be Nuggery who's giving him a top lane lesson. He's been schooling Nuggery on this matchup. He goes, no, 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 no. You can't just take Set into Gwen. It doesn't work like that. And he has just absolutely obliterated Nuggery so far in this early stages. And... Be curious to see now how it kind of goes. And yes, it's only about seven, eight hundred gold. It is literally the difference in those two kills. But it does get you towards your rift maker a little earlier. It, ooh, as I say that, oh, Nuggery, he doesn't have his flash up just yet. Going to use the ultimate to try and maybe take down the Gwen, but not quite able to do it. Almost had it, but it is Wei who comes to the rescue and doing the Tian. You're just too late, lads. And he doesn't even have to burn burn the flash to get in range to pop that ult and save his top laner. He gets there in time, is able to pull it out, and he is just not having a fun time. Still, though, Shahu going to be quite low. This is going to open up FPX to take this Rift Herald. You see that Crisp is already here. You look at the minimap. Ming is only on his way now. It does look like RNG want to posture to take this fight, though. Yeah, Kryon is there now, does pop the Dominus to see if he can try and make something work. The dredge line lands though, and that's going to force the ult, or the, excuse me, the top Kench devour very, very early. Equalizer just to disengage. FBX get out with Daylight Robbery. They are able to survive the re-engage coming out from RNG. Yeah, RNG not wanting to go for the cross map there, thinking, hey, we have members on top side right now. We can look for this. They believe they can find the fight. Not able to do that. Tian just having a very easy angle to set up that equalizer. So at least FPX are able to find something. Duinby's actually the one to pick up that Rift Herald, which means it is going to be a bit more telegraphed, you would assume, right? It's, it's either going to be in mid or when he's moving, it's like you can already react to where it will be placed down. So not as, not as dynamic or hard to read as when a jungler does have it. And, you know, you don't know where he is, can be looking for multiple ganks in different angles, in different lanes. So that is a decent silver lining for RNG coming out of that. But we are still looking at Duinby as the man who does have the massive lead in his matchup. Yeah, sitting on about a thousand gold lead for himself, which is uh, kind of surprising considering RNG in total are a thousand gold ahead. So there is a lot of different discrepancies. And the big thing I wanted to say about where the gold lead is for RNG is, of course, in that top side of the map, you see the two kills on both the Diana and the Gwen. But more importantly, and this is something I think is very underrated, is that it's on AP damage carries. And magic resistance is such a difficult thing to itemize into early. So they're going to have a lot of power very, very early on for RNG. Whereas the side of FBX, they're going to be looking to try and just, as you say, get those skirmishes, maybe pick off a couple of people, maybe even try and find a rotation off on top of Shaohu before they really go for any kind of 5v5s. And I feel like we've seen a lot of what we expect from both teams, right? FPX have been much more uh, focused on getting neutral objectives and much better at that, where for RNG, it's been about the early ganks, it's been about getting turret platings, getting CS advantages, and trying to accelerate the game through that. So we're, we know we're going to keep seeing Wei play around the top side of the map, because that is, you know, where his strong side is. Shahu's still going to be able to oh win out in these trades. Krine can be able to rotate as well, so... RNG setting up for this dive on top. Tien is making his way here, though. Does have Equalizer available. He does have the Equalizer. Ward goes down into the bush, so Wei will know if Tien pops in. Yep, they know he's there now, so I don't know if they really want to fully commit to this. I say that. Nuggery does. He flashes in, does not quite get the face breaker. And now with no Equalizer, Nuggery might be in a little bit of trouble. Rift Herald gets popped down into mid lane as the TP is going to be used there by Kryon. That's going to be full plate gold going over to Doonby. And uh, everyone just kind of backs away. Ming gets himself a blast cone. No one goes down. A hell of a lot of posture, but oh no, LWX might have to flash. And yes, he does. They have to get him away from that. And that is the power you have when you have a Callista Nautilus. That being said, doing me feeling very, very strong into this matchup in the mid lane. Doesn't care that it's a 2v1 against him. He still feels he can get the damage down and get himself out. 
Yeah, I'm just really surprised that we didn't see FPX play that that top bait maybe a little more more patiently because we saw Shao walking up. It looked like they were going to the dive. I don't know if they were afraid that Nuggery was too low that he'd be able to go down pretty instant instantly if uh, Tian and him didn't commit to making a play earlier. Did go for the flash face breaker, not able to find a good angle to look for any kind of showstopper. So. In the end, just kind of blowing summoners for no reason. Duinby was able to drag RNG back towards mid lane, though, by dropping down that Herald. And is continuing to push his lead as he's already picked up the Gore Drinker. So, no dragon for three minutes. Maybe we can start expecting to see uh, Duinby to have a little bit more influence on the map. But I feel like top lane would be rough when RNG have been just continuously putting their resources there. You can expect way to be on that side. And for bottom lane... I guess you do have Chains of Corruption now, so there there is potential windows where you can find that engage, maybe try to break down your lease in and find find kills onto the uh, Callista Nautilus. Yeah, it's been a very quiet early game on that bot side since it happened, but Doonby now going to be ganked up here by Wei as they do not get him to lock down just yet, but there's just too much CC. <laughs> Ming has roamed in, and it's exactly what we wanted to see from RNG. Wei and Ming comboing up and punishing the big man in the mid lane for FBX. I, I just don't get it. FPX have been on a tear this oh. week. Is Nuggery going down again? No. Oh, does he go down? Oh, the scissor is not quite able to cut through him. But that is going to be top lane pressure now very much for RNG. And you don't have a TP. You don't have a flash here for Nuggery. You just got to give up all of this time, pressure, and plates over to the side of RNG. And this is just going from strength to strength from RNG. RNG feel like they're the ones that are dictating what happens and when. You know... The fact that FPX literally put Team WE in the dumpster earlier this week when RNG kind of struggled to 2-0 Rogue Warriors. I mean, this is just not how I could have imagined this series would go. So far, baby. Almost 3k gold lead for the side of RNG. You do have good scaling elements in your comp. We know Gwen only gets stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Makes it incredibly hard for a champions to be able to team fight against you, especially, you know, uh, an AD carry like Varus having to walk into that hall of mist. You're, you're not going to want to do it. Can dissuade the enemy from walking forward. Give your team a better angle to look for a team fight. Diana as well. Way only getting bigger and bigger. Already having the dark seal at four stacks as well. And the rest of your team, you know, Cry and Ming are going to be kind of being meat shields looking for those engages. Gala ha having a lot of uh, kiting potential in these team fights. So. For FPX, when you're engaged, is pretty much a flash face breaker from Nuggery or finding some kind of flank with a kick from Doonby or a flank with a showstopper from Nuggery. I feel like it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens. Unless FPX can get on objectives first, then they can try and maybe find a way to where LWX and TN can pull off something with their damage. But I feel like RNG, with how the, how the comps are going forward and how fights should be breaking out, are feeling pretty good. Yeah, honestly, we saw in the last game as well, the last series, where you may, even if, you know, the likes of FBX do all in on to, say, Gala or Cryin or anything like that, you have a four-threat composition. You have a Diana Gwen, you have a Renekton. Like, you can't just ignore these champions as you come into team fights. And especially now that we're looking at, you know, the top half, five kills between Xiaohu and Wei, just means that you have so much to deal with. And as I say that, LWX with no flash, no hope, no prayer, nowhere to go. And he's going to be taken down. Xiaohu with another kill. Solo onto it. That's his third solo kill of the game from zero to three. This guy's on a mission. I just love Ming trying to pick up an assist because he queues in and actually tries to use his ultimate. You can see it, it's on cooldown now, so wasn't necessary at all. Uh, still, though, did have to throw that one down. RNG going to be able to pick up both objectives on the map on top of that kill. Going to get Dragon, going to get Rift Herald on the top side as well. Nuggery trying to respond by getting some gold back into his pocket. He should be able to trade with Crying quite, quite well because it's like, hey, Nuggery might be behind, but there's one player on the map even further behind than you in Crying. Doesn't even yeah, have Smith yet. Yeah, Cryon is, po is is poor man right now, which is very unfortunate. But mid lane's been pushed in. They did drop down the Rift Heralds as well, so. Or, excuse me, the Drift Herald was not dropped down there, so they're still waiting to see where that one will be used. As we can see, Cryon now in this top side, just trying to get himself away. Dodges absolutely everything. He's got his blue suede shoes on. 
that he dances away around all those different skill shots and he's able to go back up to the turret as everyone's resetting. They do not have a TP though with RNG. Brian, you did so well. You had gotten away and then you're just going to go back underneath the turret and die. They give over the kill to Nuggery as they drop down the Rift Herald in the mid lane. It's going to be a turret traded for his life, but I feel like RNG did everything perfect and then Cryon was like, a bit too perfect. I need to throw away something just in case. Yeah, maybe having a feeling that they were gonna they were gonna commit to wrapping around from that side. So Happy Journal maybe trying to buy time, but does end up going down in the end is a bit of a mistake. But you know, I, I feel like going forward it's very easy to see how RNG's comp wants to play out, right? It, it's pretty straightforward with, with how it wants to team fight. Uh it, heavy dive comp, getting on the back line, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. For for FPX at this point in time, I feel like what you're hoping for is for doing me to go to a side, try to put some pressure down. And then you're trying to make it so you can be the one to get in river first, get down river vision, and try to be in a position where RNG are the ones contesting river against you. You're able to put a, a down the poke with LWX, maybe find a place where you can land a really good equalizer. And then theoretically, you should have deep wards bring in Nuggery from the back or do and be with that kick that we talked about. And I, that's FPX's avenue to finding advantages, getting back in this game, and potentially being able to take a win. So. I do think RNG probably have the, the easier time as of right now, but not impossible for the side of FPX. Yep, it's still only about a 3,000 gold lead in favor of RNG, or just a little bit under it. You have got Mythics across the board now for everybody, and of course the poke coming out from this Lethality Virus will still be very, very useful against the very squishy composition of RNG. But you gotta be so, so careful. 301 onto Gwen, 300 onto your Diana. If these guys are able to jump onto LWX, it doesn't matter if you have a Tam Kench. He's going to die. There's just so much, only so much a virus can do once he's just been jumped on like that. And for RNG, you're very, very happy with kind of the way things have gone so far. And we talked about how they, they like to focus towards that bot side at the start of the game, but it's just been Xiaohu finding his own advantages. Those solo kills doing so much work for them in this mid game. Yeah, and I feel like it's good that you're highlighting mid-game and then, like, the, the potential poke that can come out from LWX uh, because that will be one worry for RNG going forward. It's sure, they actually do have a ton of engage, so I don't think it should be something they will have to worry about, but it will be so critical of which team is able to control vision because it is going to get to a point later on if this game goes long enough where LWX will be able to put off, put off enough damage onto your team before any real fights break out. And even TN, we know the Equalizer's always on an extremely short cooldown, so even if you're blowing that one kind of preemptively before a skirmish breaks out and then have it up again for a later fight, it you know, th there will have to be some concerns. Don't feel like there's any right now. When Dragon comes up in about a minute, I feel like RNG still should be pretty well positioned to get that one. We see a full item up, uh, Shaohu over Nuggery. Way almost there as well. I mean, he would be a full item up, but he picked up the Oblivion Orb to have the Grievous Wounds and is Ooh. close to getting his Zani's Hourglass. This is a very deep teleport here. Xiaohu does not spot this one out. Doombi in a bush looking for an opportunistic kill. Oh. It's going to be able to kick him right over the wall. And the flash in from Tien, the flame spinner to get the kill. That was so five head. Oh my God. FPX were always one of the teams that would bring out creative plays like that. We have seen times where it could potentially bite them back if the enemy team does have a good setup on the opposite side of the map to take more. This wasn't one of those times, though. A lot of members of, of RNG were coming off resets, were coming off farming jungle camps. The bot wave hadn't really been pushed out yet, as I think even Crying was coming back from uh, being positioned either top or mid. So just really nice play coming out from Doonby. They will be down a TP, but I think in that situation, you're looking for every small advantage you can find to getting back uh, into the game. That small little advantage, TM picked himself up 600 gold, immediately went back, picked himself up a stopwatch. So has that for the next fight, as doing be again, by hook or by crook, a man on now. a mission. He is, uh, he is just going to be a man on a mission to keep FBX in this game. Like, they, you know, it's just these kind of plays of why we have to keep highlighting, uh, you know, doing these. Why we we have to keep looking back to him as the main man for FBX because that doesn't that play doesn't happen unless he TPs and immediately goes for it. I also feel like FPX aren't even, like, not in this game anymore, right? Now the gold is their 1k down. That's not too big of a deal. Uh, fights are going to be extremely close at this point. So FPX doing a good job to find certain picks to get them back into the game. Still, RNG also leading one dragon up. 
now we are in a position where RNG are the ones who have the double TP, so they can try to be the team that, that you know, punishes someone like Nuggery on one side of the map, uh, bring Xiaohu down along with Cry and try and get that kill, and then, you know, if something breaks out on opposite side, you do have those TPs there to try to react uh, effectively. Oh, they might try and look for a repeat, but this time round, Wei is there with the Crescent Strike to say, hey, stay away from my top laner. You don't need to be bullying him no more. He's done enough bullying himself. But uh, now looking down the items, we're starting to see two items being picked up here by most of the carries. You can see there the Runans and the, um, the uh, Mythic item as well for Gala, alongside, you know, the Zonyas here and the Protobelt for the Diana on Way. It's going to be a little bit of a sore game for Kryon. He has been put very much in the ground. He's 40 CS behind and a kill as well. But his job in these games is not to carry his team. It's just to be a nuisance. As Doon B gets himself caught out. Instant TP. This is the advantage that you just talked about. Now Doon B misses the Sonic Wave. And the TP is going to be coming out here from Nuggery, who is so immediately flashed. So no flash ultimate available or face breaker as they jump on top of the set on the top side. Everyone's still pushing forward here from the side of RNG, but they don't find any more purchase with this skirmish. Doon B walking forward, does get a safeguard back. LWX gets a little bit of hurt from Xiao Hu's Gwen. And RNG back themselves up, but maybe they look to try and force this Baron. As I say that, Doon B gets hooked up. They do have the Devourer. You can see Chris waiting to try and use it to chain a quick on top of the Equalizer, but it's going to be... A nice receive here from Gala to keep his support alive. A lot of ultimates, a lot of summoners, not a lot of people going down. Yeah, RNG not able to fully commit into that, right? You're fighting in a choke, you're fighting in the jungle. Once Tian drops down, the Equalizer not able to commit, but we saw some things blown early on both sides. Nuggery having to use TP right away because he did teleport just in the middle of RNG. We see Kryon uh, use his, his Dominus quite early as well, thinking a fight would break out, thinking he does have to be that frontliner, but nothing happened. And then by the time we get into an exchange, Mink finds a hook, but FPX extremely close to their, their inner turret mid. They still have things like the Equalizer available to dissuade RNG from going in. And in the end, we aren't, we aren't really going to get anything. So right now, we're still going to have both teams getting the setup for uh, Vision. Next Drake is in about two minutes. So right now, it's about controlling that Vision in the top half of the map. Not even necessarily for Baron, but getting Vision down, trying to find picks, and then trying to force the enemy team to come retake Vision closer to the time Dragon comes, so then you can pivot to the bottom half of the map and then have the setup there. And this is where key decisions come in for both teams as well, because both teams can pretty much burn down objectives so damn qu quickly. Callista, Diana, and Gwen, fantastic at that. Of course, on the other side, you've got the Rumble, the Lisa, and the Virus. So you leave someone alone on a Baron or a Dragon, it's just gone. There's nothing you can do about it. So be curious to see how both these teams adapt and how they push themselves forward and what they prioritize. That's the big thing. One team might care about the Dragon Soul. The other team might be like, that's fine. We'll take Baron. No issues whatsoever. Speaking of no issues, RNG might have had themselves an issue there as they were stacked in enemy territory and FBX kind of had an inkling that they were sitting there. And they also need to be careful, right? Because Crying's on the bottom half of the map. Crying does not have TP. Doombi does. Doombi still able to control this one, uh, being still much further ahead than Crying. Crying and Nuggery about on par with each other to where Shaohu and Doombi kind of uh, the same on the opposite side. So that's how both teams are able to guarantee Pryo on opposite sides of the map. But FPX is going to do a good job of knowing they can retake Vision now. Doombi is able to just walk up and, and use his presence to help threaten this. Right now using that, that threat of the TP. But RNG, Nuggery doesn't have Flash. Ooh, he doesn't, but you can see Crisp just hovering over the wall. Going to use a Devour there. As we see the bot side. Doombi's not even taking damage. Crying, you cannot win this. Minion to the rescue. Superstar Minion to stop the Resonating Strike from going through. And that is FBX doing B showing how strong he is on this Lee Sig. Crying, not really much he can do about it. He's just kind of relegated to clearing waves, making sure that Doombi is not able to get any kind of free objective. I mean, not only having all that sustain from the Gore Drinker and Sterex, right? He's already even pretty darn close to having the Randu and Zomin that it looks like he's building towards. So it's going to be even harder for Crying and Gala to be able to do anything to do in me. So a lot of it going to be in Shaohu and Wei's hands, like you said. We're getting to a point where Dragon's coming up in about four seconds. And I feel like for the side of FPX, we're looking at Tien's Equalizer. How much work can that do? What kind of play can do and be made? On the opposite side, it's about Wei and Shaohu. 
All right, here we go. Dragon has been started. There's no resonating strike to land. We do see Crying popping the Dominus. Dredge line does miss to go in the top of this. No, but it's taken by RNG. Now the fight can really happen. The 5v5 is going to be started right here, right now. As Nuggery does find himself with a ultimate to start it all off. The equalizer on top of it as the exhaust goes down. Crying is the first one to fall, but the moonfall is just too good on the back end of this. And RNG are flashing over. They're pushing forward. They know they want this fight. They know they want these kills. And they know they are good enough and strong strong enough to take it as Xiao Hu just keeps pushing forward. He's looking for him like, I'm nom 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 nom. I've got myself my scissors. I am running with them even though it's considered dangerous. Actually is a little bit dangerous as the rest of FBX do find themselves now on this bot side. There is the ultimate from Tan Kens to maybe put someone in position. Very, very difficult. Flash, tongue, lash. Xiao Hu is got back in the face. Breaker and taken down. Just chased a little bit too far. But while that's been happening, Baron has been started. TP has been channeled. Double TP has been channeled, but everyone backs away. And after all that fighting, after all that engagement, we do end up having a lot less summoners and a lot more dragons for RNG. And like you said, Xiaohu trying to find that kill on doing me, kind of thwarting the, the plans of RNG. You know, he thought he'd be able to get it with his E coming off cooldown. Maybe not assuming the other members of FX would be close, but we're going to go straight into the fight. And it's going to be Doonby walking up. They're going to try and steal away the dragon. They aren't able to do it. They get a ton of damage down onto Doonby early on. But Nuggery being the one to turn around the engage with the showstopper. The equalizer looks pretty good. Crying and other members having to get out of there immediately. And they do find the kill down onto Crying. But as you said, uh, we are going to see Xiaohu and others make their way into the fight. Way finding a really nice moonfall onto LWX. And this is where you can see the members of RNG realize, hey, we have a Callista, let's turn to Baron. They might have a few members up, but worst case scenario, we can force a fight, as we're already getting a fight after the replay. We're already going for one, but there's a TP on the backside. This is a great flank position for RNG. The Moonfall oh, lands TP. on the three. It's a double TP. There's the equalizer just coming up. Xiaohu is here. It's a two for one trade in favor of FBX right now. Three for one as Nogari's picking up all these kills. Oh, it's disaster for RNG, but it's elation for the side of FBX. They get five kills for one. It was all a bait, and they're going to turn to Baron. And now FPX get everything. They were so far behind in the early game. Nuggery got solo killed twice from Xiaohu. But in the end, the second Xiaohu got in the fight, he was instantly gone. I actually didn't even really see Xiaohu appear on my screen. I saw that the teleport finished channel. Ch the teleport uh, finished channeling. There we go. This fight is too hype. And then he was just gone, Penguin. But now FPX going to get the Baron. We're hopefully going to calm down. We're not going to come out of a replay and go into another fight. But... We are going to see here how it started all off. FPX thinking that they found the picks onto RNG. RNG saying, hey, we have two teleports. We initially see Shao channeling his. I'm not sure why uh, Kryon also opted into yeah. that being taken down immediately. And you look at Shao and just instantly melted by the members of FPX. Tien and Nuggery uh, doing such a good job to take him down. Surprised how much damage Nuggery able to get down on that. And the other members of FPX taking care of Gala on the opposite side of the fight. And now you look across FPX, they're all so massive. The top side is all big. Somehow Nuggery is back into this game. And even LWX might be sitting at 0, 3, and 3, but his items are extremely cheap. He's going to be able to do a ton of damage uh, due to how squishy RNG's team composition is regardless. And now, I mean, the, the script is flipped. 4k gold lead for FPX. 4k gold lead. And I, I really do have to call out that TP from Crying. You were four yards away from, from your team. You know, Doonby would overextend it. You could have helped Gala out, maybe taken that kill. That fight looks very different then because Callista's able to keep putting spears into people, but not to be. And then with this Baron buff, they're just going to be able to keep pushing into these waves, try and take down some of these standing gold that they have in the tier one turrets. It becomes very difficult right now for RNG. You have a Callista and a Renekton. They don't scale as well as a Lee Sin and a Varus in these later stages. And that's going to hurt them quite a bit in coming into the 30, 30 minute beyond, you know, kind of stage of the game. Yeah, RN, there, there is still hope for RNG, right? They still do have a ton of bursts if they are able to get onto the key members of FPX. But who do you even qualify as a key member at this point, right? You have so many members of, of FPX who are so far ahead. We saw that... It was Nuggery and Tien who were the ones who were able to pretty much instantly just delete Shao in that fight. Sure, LWX did do some works, uh, work with this Q from uh, across the fight, but 
Yeah, I feel like this is a very rough position for FPX. Now they will be able to guarantee that they're on objectives first. That was one of the win conditions we were talking about earlier for them, being able to force RNG to walk through choke points, to walk uh, through their vision, layer a lot of that poke onto them first and get those members low. So for FPX, this is going to be a free dragon as we do see RNG already getting those resets off. I think something I want to highlight just as we have a little moment of no one really kind of going for any crazy engages as of right now, but Nuguri was behind, was solo killed, got lost a lot of waves, was not really in a position to be able to kind of carry versus someone like Cryant. Cryant was in the same position, but you're looking at 4, 3, and 2 versus 1, 4, and 2, and the, the, the item differential, everything, it just feels right now like Cryant just played from behind poorly and has been making a couple of very poor decisions versus Nuggery, who's been target selection on his ultimate, has been fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and I remember there was another game earlier on, I think it was FPX played against TT, where he was on the NAR and he was heavily focused early on. Started off, you know, like maybe 0 2, 0 3, something on those lines. Later came in finding amazing ultimates, and that's how it feels about Nuggery. You know, he's not going to get a ton of attention from FPX, doesn't matter how far you set him behind, but he's always going to find a way to have an impact on the game. On the opposite end, RNG now trying to still control that, that bot side of the map with Xiaohu. We have the full Kempunk chainsword coming out from Nuggery, so having those, those grievous wounds, all of RNG pivoting towards this side of the map so we are going to see Nuggery just get the hell out of there is FTX going to be playing more around Duinby's pressure on that top side Doombi is the man. He is level 18. He is so huge as he goes in, gets the kick, gets the black shit on top of Gala, but maybe he has caught himself a little bit too far forward. Now we can see what these spears can do. Doombi gets out. Callista does fall. The rest of the solo laners from the side of RNG are here, but it might be a little bit too little too late. Here's the showstopper. Doombi has fallen. Now it's a 2v4. As you can see, Shao Hu and Cryon trying their best. The hail of arrows is enough to take down the crocodile in the mid lane. Double kill for LWX. Triple kill for for LWX gets his first three kills of the game, and that might just be the game as FBX are four men strong, but they don't have a minion wave just yet. And Penguin, if the game does just end off that, uh, uh, that's kind of unbelievable to me because when Duinby first went in, he finds the kick, it kind of looks all cool at first, but we don't see the equalizer come out immediately. It kind of looked like Duinby was just going to give his life, but somehow RNG just funnel in one by one, and it looks like maybe they did. Did they just give FPX the game? 10 seconds on Wei, only five on Gala and Ming. Mm -hmm. Bit risky, playing. FBX don't exactly. want to do it. Exactly. was uh, playing pretty pretty close to the edge, I'd say, for, for both teams, right? RNG dying right there. FBX almost able to end, but FBX realizing at the last second, hey, we can't go for this. Too many members are coming up. I hope we get a replay of that one because, you know, we see the kick come out from Doing B, and then he was just getting chunked so low by the members of RNG. Pretty nice, pretty clean pivot to bring that on to the Kaiso. We see Ning lock down as well. And the fact that Tom Kench is here I means Doombi gets a safety. Dino with a really nice ultimate trying to lock a few members of FPX down, but so many stopwatches coming out. We see members going down one at a time. Ming off to the side, not even able to get back towards his team. Crying going to be taken down. And then with four men still standing, they all realize, hey, we can just funnel in on top of Xiaohu. We still have that Devour coming out from Crisp if we need it. And overall, it was a really nice uh, display of FPX realizing their limits. Yeah, really, really nicely played by them. And I do feel like the most underrated summoner spell so far, these two last series that we've casted, has been Exhaust. Exhaust has just been so key at stopping things like the Gwen, the Diana, hell, even the Renekton, if you want to put it, you know, of, uh, from jumping in on these backsides and killing someone outright. The fact that the Exhaust went down onto the Diana meant that they weren't able, or sorry, the Xiaohu meant that he wasn't able to kill off LWX. They weren't able to get, you know, any kind of foothold in the fight and now I, I just feel so bad because it does feel like it's five v four and a half Cryon is just nothing right now he has no gold he's really falling behind in items he's a glorified support tank at this stage because he just hasn't got any any threat on anyone no he he definitely is not he, i mean he he's pretty much just a frontliner that's 
the only impact he can bring and you know he's never going to be as as efficient or as potent as someone like nuggery on the set all of the utility that you bring in the rest of your your kit as well also interesting i know i know doing bought this earlier on in the game but the serpent's fang coming out was something i wanted to hit on for a little bit but you know we had a ton of action are a bunch of shields on the side of rng one going to come out from the immortal shield bow diana having a shield in her kit you have the the mythic item coming out from ming so and i uh, try and get the the value out of that one also an extremely cheap item so that's my guess why doobie went out a few minutes ago because it was right before a skirmish did happen but kind of interesting mix of tank sustain and then like a random dose of lethality in there for shield breaking he's got it all he can do it all he's one of those uh sh you know tv shopping ads it's like it does it all it does tank it does damage it does engage anything you need this doing b can do it have a look down at the other items as well. We do actually have a Zhonya's finished up and a Death Cap for Shaohu. TP's available. Dragon spawning in three seconds. Unfortunately for FBX, it will be their third, not their soul. This RNG are now posturing around this top side. They're saying, take it. We don't care if you go for that dragon. We will pressure around this uh, barren pit. You have to respect that. The one thing the side of RNG have to respect, however, is there are still super minions powering into this mid lane. I mean, that's the thing, right? RNG are... Uh, showing that they understand the fact that they cannot fight FPX in 5v5s right now. They don't feel comfortable doing that. They definitely can't walk into a quadrant of the jungle where they have no vision and face check members of FPX. So they try to kind of pull one over on FPX, say, hey, we can do the Baron. Kind of come over here. Maybe we can whittle you down and we, we can find and engage. But FPX with a nice response, they say, hey, we will, we will hover towards this side of the map so you can't do Baron. Have one man just take Dragon itself and then RNG just losing out on the map not able to get anything as uh we get tp's coming out from all over whoa okay tp's there in the mid lane thing does not get caught out by anything just yet but both doing b and xiaohu now expending that global pressure just crying and nuggery available with that you gotta feel like nuggery will be a little bit more impactful with it you can see crying just taking so much poke from these piercing arrows this virus still very very relevant speaking of which doing b goes into the backside. it's a bit of a fight again on split on two fronts equalizers hit absolutely nothing as we can see now crying goes down but he's a glorified tank this is all down onto rng and fbx if their carries can survive lwx does fall into his ga you can see the Kiting coming out the Immortal Shield though. Not enough, but Xiaohu, is he enough? Is he able to do something? It's Wei and Xiaohu versus Chris Badoobi, but it's gonna be Wei and Xiaohu that come out on top. RNG get the fight they wanted. They get all the kills and they might look to try and end the game. And the carries are going back and forth. We do have about 40 second dead timers on the side of FPX. They we know RNG it. will very at least be able to get the inhibitor. I don't know if they can go for the full end, but it looks like they're gonna try. Oh my the god, wave. so much action! They're protecting the minion wave. They know they need the minion wave to stay alive, and now they can use it. Now they can let it go down. They have the auto attack. They have oh, the they damage. RNG in, in a back and forth game. Still down. 3,000 gold. Come out with a win in game one. And think about how forced that was on the side of FPX, right? We start off with the TP. We get in there. They kind of... They kind of Wade off to trying to get vision in the river, but then the last second they come back down mid. We see Doombi go straight onto way, and you you nailed it. The equalizer completely just flopped coming out from Rumble, and from there it's like sure you're able to get down key members, but that's that's a huge chunk of your damage going down. We saw the two strong members of RNG left alive. They will take over, and again I'm just kind of speechless at, at the fact that that game was able to end. That game, we had so many fights that were all over the place, so many unexpected, I'd say either misplays or outplays coming out that led to the other team winning. It read that last fight, I would love to get a very kind of slow replay of exactly what went down <laughs> because so many things went wrong for FBX. They use all of their pretty much, you know, damage abilities on top of Cryon. He was the first one to die. So then they had to expend flashes to get on top of the Callista. And at that point, Xiaohu's like, fantastic. I'm just getting resets onto my auto attacks and my passive for my Q. The needlework is doing work. And then Wei was just on the backside. You know, I feel bad for Chris. Chris was running back and forth saying, who do I help? Who do I help kite in this situation? Who do I devour? And there wasn't really a good decision or a good outcome for you know, anyone on the side of FBX, but cannot take away from RNG. They kept at it. They really did show us a fantastic early game, really kind of put FBX to the sword and FBX with great mid game decisions, great, you know, uh, engages with Doombi, of course, and were able to bring it back. But RNG now won over in the series.
Yeah, I mean, we saw a lot of we saw a lot of good and bad things from both teams that series, right? RNG with like a spectacular early game, pretty much just focusing on finding ganks, finding opportunities, especially setting down Nuggery. Shao Hu, I think, laning phase uh, phenomenally. Nuggery really struggling up against the, the, the Gwen with the set matchup. Then the mid game, it's like, hey, FPX are coming out. They're actually the ones out skirmishing. We saw them make really creative plays especially that tp towards top with dwimby dwimby really was the one anchoring them in the game when they fell behind and then getting them back in and then that last fight i love that you highlighted crisp and having to be like who do i protect who do i protect because right that wasn't even really a team fight it was kind of like a bunch of different skirmishes all over the place and it let champions like gwen and diana thrive and you know, I'm not sure how Wei got off his, his moonfall wow. in the end because we saw <laughs> we saw Dwinby especially go down very early on. And we once again have another game where the team, you know, who is losing in gold wins the game. Feels like that, that happens every other day here now. It really does feel like it happens every other day, but gotta give props to FBX. They really came back from a, a, a disastrous early game, to be perfectly honest. It was very very dark and bleak for them coming into the 15 20 minute mark but then with the creative plays with knowing that nuglery still has this showstopper he still has this very solid engaged tool we have the damage to go into that late game they brought it back and you can see it just a massive fall with that baron play just giving him so much gold so much agency and priority and then yeah it was just a load of different skirmishes kind of almost two or three meters away from each other in the mid lane where it was kind of like okay you two are fighting this guy you two are fighting this people like it didn't feel like a cohesive team fight and unfortunately for fbx it's just uh, not good enough against the caliber of team like rng who were able to fully capitalize on it I also just think it's another time where we're seeing the strength of Gwen come out in this meta. Oh, yeah. uh, we've seen it. We've seen it a few times where, you know, Gwen able to single handedly turn around like a team fight that that ends up winning the game. And yeah, now we get to go into game two. I think after game one, I was left speechless many times. I'm super excited going to game two, Penguin. I am, too. We're going to throw it to a quick break. And when we return, we will be straight into picks and ban for game two. You will not want to miss it.